Nom, 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 nom. Oh, hey. Come here often? Ugh. I kind of hope you don't because this is my apartment. <laughs> she writes a text in lowercase letters In the party sing a song and come and get her Nobody does it better than she do Hello. This is Taylor. I kind of feel like I should introduce myself because I've been making videos a bit less frequently the last six months. Hi. I'm Taylor. <laughs> I'm a 25-year-old management consultant and YouTuber, originally from California, went to college on the East Coast, and I've been living and working here in the thick apple for the last couple of years. Introduction over. <laughs> well, it is that time of year again, the time where I go and find a pretty random doorstep in New York City, out in the public. Oh, sorry. Do you mind if I film on your stoop? Because <laughs> okay. it's really nice. <laughs> and then weigh the pros and cons of where to move next within New York City, make a decision, and then make a video about it. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully provide some helpful tips and tricks and frameworks for this kind of thought process in case you're also going for a move. Okay, so quick recap of last year's decision, aka where I live right now, and some of the pros and cons that I weighed last time around. So I have lived in this apartment in Manhattan since moving to the city, and I absolutely love it. The windows are stunning, the view is fantastic, the amenities are great. I've talked about it enough on this channel. No more. Okay, maybe a little more. <laughs> as much as I love it though, I do sometimes feel like I'm kind of far away from the action, as I like to call it, AKA the spots that I usually like to explore and go out in with my friends. And my neighborhood doesn't have a ton of character, if you care about that kind of thing. So I considered the pros and cons of moving to a more walkable part of Manhattan, like the West Village, but recognize that areas like that are just a lot more expensive and I just would not get nearly as much space or windows like I currently have, which I value a lot because I work from home quite a bit. So anyway, the conclusion in last year's video was this. When it came time to either end my lease or renew it, I found out that my apartment building is rent stabilized, which I did not know when I first signed the lease. And mind you that this was during a time when median rent prices for one bedrooms in Manhattan were spiking like 40% year over year. Not a good time to be moving when we had some sneaky rent stabilization, I'll tell you that much. So my roommate and I renewed our lease for another year. Okay, back to present day. This year, things are a little bit different. And spoiler alert, the conclusion is not the same as last year, so buckle up. <laughs> so a few months ago, my roommate told me that she would be moving out to live with her significant other at the end of our lease. They're both good friends of mine, I'm super happy for them, but then I had two options. One, renew my lease and find someone to fill her room, or two, end my lease and move somewhere else. And I knew that I didn't want to live alone. I actually never do. So I had to find a roommate or multiple roommates in either case. For a while, I just really wasn't stressing about it. I don't really stress all that much about it. I was like, I'll figure something out. At least one of my friends will be looking for a roommate. It's all good. And then some more time passed and I realized it was not quite as easy as I thought it would be. And I found out that this is a pretty typical housing shuffle, a stressful one that a lot of people go through. Because once you're a few years out of college, there's a cohort of people that move in with their significant others. There's a cohort of people that move into a single because they now want to slash can afford to live alone. And then of course there's a cohort of people that just stay in their current situation because they like it and there's no reason to change it. So if you're not in one of those three groups, you kind of have to find someone who's in your same sitch. And there were way fewer of those than I expected. None of my very close friends, none of my kind of close friends either, honestly. And I didn't really want to move in with someone who I didn't know super well, you know? So it started to become a little stressful, even for me. <laughs> okay, but tabling the roommate part of the equation for now, I also have a different set of wish list items this year than I did last year. Because with every year, your priorities definitely change a little and you just learn more about what you value the most in where you live and who you live with. So yes, while I still have this rent stabilized apartment that I could renew at a great price, relative to other luxury buildings in Manhattan, do I still wanna optimize for the same things? Last year, I valued price, obviously, but also windows, a view, and having a relatively large space since I work from home quite a bit. And I was willing to compromise on the area that I live in in order to have these things. So what do I value this year, you ask? Thank you for asking. First one, <laughs> obvious is price, duh. It's not quite as important to me this time around because I've been working for a couple years, but I still value saving and investing a large portion of my income, so of course it's still a consideration. The second thing is hitting the like button. Thanks. <laughs> the next two are similar to last year, so I won't spend much time on these, but big windows and a lot of sunlight, still paramount. The more I thought about those cute little townhouses in the West Village, as beautiful as they are, if my windows were facing a brick wall like this, I'd be depressed. No offense to whoever lives here, but 
I hate your windows. <laughs> the second thing is a decent amount of space. Cutting myself off here because I make a sort of insensitive joke, even more insensitive than the hating your windows thing. But yeah, a decent amount of space because I usually work from home a couple days a week, so having some breathing room is nice. Okay, moving on to some slightly new key performance indicators that I realized I really value after another rotation around the sun here in New York City. Kind of a long way of saying, here are some new things that I value. <laughs> Practicality. So what do I mean by that? Yeah, I know I like to shit on my area for not being cute and not having a lot of character, but it is quite practical. There are lots of, well, I don't know about lots, but there are plenty of affordable food options around me. If I'm hungry, I can leave my apartment, go grab a salad or a sandwich for less than $10 and be back up in my apartment within five minutes. And that less than $10 bit there is really saying something for New York. There are also lots of restaurants right around me that do not cost a million dollars when I go and have a sit down dinner. There's a Target, there's a city bike and bus stations right outside my apartment. It's great. It is a subway dead zone, which is not practical, but can't have it all. So cheap and quick food options nearby, a convenience store like a Target or a CVS and some solid transportation options is how I'm defining practicality here. And you might say, well then, isn't everywhere in Manhattan practical? No, actually, there are some areas I know of in the city where it's only expensive restaurants around you, so you cannot get like a quick, cheap bite. But then those areas are usually quite picturesque and have some solid transportation, so there's always some give and take. Okay, next wish list item that I care a bit more about this year is having some character to my neighborhood, which I define as having a bit more of a quaint, somewhat charming, somewhat picturesque feel to it. I really love walking. It's my favorite way to see a city. So the idea of walking out of my apartment and enjoying looking at my surroundings and not living on a super busy street is something I'm willing to pay a bit more for this year. Even if that means giving up some of the amenities that I have in my luxury high rise. And the reason I say that is because the luxury high rises are usually found in like midtown Manhattan, Bi Dai, some in Tribeca, those are like a billion dollars. Anyway, they're not in the typically like cute neighborhoody parts of Manhattan. The final item on my wish list, which circles us right back to where we left off a couple minutes ago is people. I'm a social person and that feeling of coming home to some close friends to be able to talk about your day with is so important to me. Even if you're sitting in silence with someone, because some silence is good, don't get me wrong, despite how I might sound, or watching your own memes on opposite ends of the couch, just being around people is just, I, it's something I really value. So after taking into account all these things, price, windows slash good sunlight, decent amount of space, practicality, character slash good area, and what was the last thing? roommates. <laughs> was I able to find a place that checked most of these boxes and will I be leaving my amazing place that I've called home for two years or did I find someone else to move in with me and will I renew my lease? Drum roll. <laughs> I will in fact be moving. It is actually so bittersweet with the amount of memories that I've made in this apartment and the videos that I have filmed in this exact spot. I mean if you've been around you've seen this view a lot and there is a lot of nostalgia for me i really really like this space but not only did i find a new apartment that checks almost all of my boxes with two count them two amazing roommates who i'm excited for you guys to meet they're not really what you would expect but there's also one final thing that i didn't really touch on because it's more of an intangible rather than a wish list item and that is exploration as i've said on my channel before i do not plan to live in new york forever definitely longer than I expected because I do think it's the greatest city in the world, but not forever. So for the years that I am here, I just really want to explore and live in different parts of the city. Not that you have to live somewhere to explore it, but to be able to call different parts of the city home while I'm here is something that I want. So where am I moving and what will I be paying? That's the final part of my outline here. Well, I'm not gonna tell you the exact area, obviously, but it is somewhere in this box. So I'm staying in Manhattan and it is somewhere a lot closer to the areas that I usually go out in with my friends. And it does have more of a neighborhoody feel, but also some solid practicality points when it comes to food options and convenience. And it's not a million dollars despite having nice windows and a lot of sunlight and a decent amount of space. So, and price. I will be paying $3,100 per month for it, which is definitely an increase compared to what I pay now. Turning down the rent stabilization was a tough pill to swallow, don't get me wrong, especially because the rent stabilization was based off of the COVID deal that we got. But like I said, price is not quite as important to me this year. And believe it or not, it's actually still a pretty good deal for what I'm getting. You'll see. <laughs> if you wanna see, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. It's totally free. And if you enjoyed this at all, pretty please hit the thumbs up. I will love you forever. Okay, cringe, but thanks. <laughs> and until next time, turtle out. Wow, New York is so loud. You don't realize it until you're trying to film a video. Oh, a chop saw. Awesome. <laughs> Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> Sup. <laughs> Wow, that's close. <laughs> Maybe too close. That guy over there looks like the guy from Home Alone, the one that shovels snow, but you know, it's actually bodies. <laughs> that's pretty good. That'll do.